Good afternoon. Welcome. God bless you. Karen Smith, God bless you. Thanks for watching. Oh, wow. That's it. Y'all are coming in. Good afternoon, Vicki. Good afternoon, Tina. God bless you all. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining today. This is Monday, October 17th, 2022. I pray that you all are doing well on this Monday. It is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Good afternoon, Betty. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Pray that you are doing well. We have no complaints because of the God we serve, our good, good Father. And we are so thankful. We are grateful for this new day. God bless you. Pray you're doing well. Let me know in the chat how you're doing. If you can. If you can. I hope you can hear me. Today I can see who's watching in the, uh, sometimes I can and sometimes I can't, but thankful today I can see some of you that's watching. God bless you. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and get started. We, uh, don't believe in, oh, wait a minute, in, uh, procrastinating. Well, hello there. Good afternoon, Miss Doris. Thanks for watching. Pray that you are having a blessed day. Today is off to a good start. We're grateful. We're confident today because of the God that we serve. So, Father, we thank you once again for this new day. We dare not take it for granted. You woke us up this morning, and we are alive and well with no complaints, only grateful. So we invite you in, in this broadcast today, because we depend on you, Holy Spirit, to give us what you desire for us to have and to know, and to be encouraged and empowered during this week. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. Thank you for those who are watching. Thank you for those who will watch the replay. Thank you for those that will hear, and uh, we trust that you will meet their need and provide the comfort, the encouragement, the empowerment that they need to endure and to face whatever challenges they may have to in this week. We give you all praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. So once again, hi there, Lisa. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Uh, so we are continuing our series let's take a break and let's talk jesus and pray and so our focus on today is uh, jesus quenches our deepest thirst and our focus scripture comes from uh, john the fourth chapter uh, verses 13 and 14. we will not uh, give you all the background and all the details uh, about this encounter and this dialogue that Jesus has with the woman at the well. I'm sure you're familiar with it, have heard about it. But because we don't take a lot of time, uh, we don't go into in-depth uh, context about uh, what's really taking place as to all the history and all of that. But just want to give you a couple of points on this this uh, focus, and that is Jesus quenches our deepest thirst. Again, the scripture is uh, John, the fourth chapter, verses 13 and 14. Uh, now, naturally, water is essential for the uh, proper function of the body, right? You know that we need water in the natural. We have to have water. Water is the true essence of life. And to ensure that we stay uh, well hydrated, uh, we need to drink water. And in the natural, some of the things that uh, water does, I uh, just want to share a couple with you. And as I speak of these in the natural, I really want us to focus and zoom in on 
the water that we need in the spiritual perspective. Uh, water in the natural ensures that, of course, we stay well hydrated. Uh, water protects tissues and joints. Uh, drinking enough water keeps your body temperature regulated. Uh, it helps get rid of waste products. Uh, water prevents constipation, flushes out toxins. Uh, it helps us to digest food. Uh, drinking water helps uh, to absorb nutrients. Uh, drinking water improves your blood oxygen levels. Uh, drinking Water boosts your metabolism and your energy. It improves your mood. <laughs> and it also helps with your brain to function. So these are some of the uh, essential, uh, the importance of drinking water in the natural. So if we think about this, this need for water in the natural, what about what we need uh, from a spiritual perspective? And we know that Jesus, hallelujah, is the living word of God. And so the word of God, uh, water is symbolic for the word of God. Uh, Paul talks about it in Ephesians. He says the washing of the word is what uh, we need and what God desires for us. And so when we look at this particular story, uh, this account of John and Jesus in John, the uh, fourth chapter, we see that Jesus uh, meets uh, this woman at the well. Again, I, I don't want to go into all the details, but the scripture says that he's, he's uh, journeying, he's on his way, and because he's weary from his journey, he stops at this well. First of all, to back up, the scripture says he had to go through Samaria. I said I wasn't going to go into all the details, but just briefly, there was conflict between the Jews and the Samaritans. You have to go back and study the history. Uh, this all took place during the time of the exile. But so Je the Jews did not go through Samaria, but Jesus did not go the long way around he had to go through Samaria. <laughs> and of course, we realized why he had to do it. And so he stops at this well, Jacob's well, and uh, he waits there. The scriptures say he's weary. And so this woman comes, it is like 12 noon. Uh, she comes to draw water. And so he enters a dialogue with her and he asks her for a drink. I'm paraphrasing. And of course, she understands that, hey, Jews do not have any, any dealings with Samaritans, so why are you asking me for a drink of water? Jesus says, <laughs> if you knew about God's gift and who it is that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Speaking of eternal life. And so now he piques her interest, and the dialogue starts uh, as to uh, the need for this water. So she's interested now. Hmm. But before I go any further, I want to I want to point out that, like this woman at the well, many in today's society are dehydrated, and they are thirsty. And like this woman, they're looking to uh, quench their thirst by other means. They're trying to hydrate in other ways to satisfy the flesh. But the real need is to be spiritually hydrated. And that can only happen through uh, total commitment to Jesus Christ and what he offers. And so when we look, continue to look at this dialogue with Jesus and this woman at the well, he tells her that, hey, if you knew who it was that was talking to you and asking you for a drink, you would want this drink. And what I have for you, you won't have to come here, keep, keep coming here. And so of course, 
now she's piqued in her interest and she wants to know okay first of all she says well you don't have anything to draw water with jesus is speaking spiritually but she's still speaking and thinking naturally and so that's what happens a lot of time because people are ignorant of the spiritual need so they can't grasp they can't comprehend their spiritual need because they are focused on the natural so he says give me a drink he gets her attention she she starts talking about the racial uh, tension and the racial conflict then Jesus addresses her ignorance, uh, her lack of knowledge. And I repeat, that is the issue a lot of times with people being spiritually uh, dehydrated because they can't comprehend. They lack the knowledge or they lack uh, who they need that can give them the spiritual uh, need, and that is water. And so... He, he moves and he's continuing to speak to her spiritual things, but she's stuck in the natural. Hallelujah. And a lot of times people lack of understanding the spiritual matters. And so we have to be so into the word and our life so committed to Jesus Christ that that water, that word continues to flow up out of us as a fountain of living water so that when we come in contact with people who we know need this spiritual water, that only comes from the word of God and Jesus Christ, then we have to be prepared in order to give them what they need and to help them understand. And that only can happen through the power of the Holy Ghost. When we are continuously connected to him and we are seeking him and we are allowing the prophetic to come forth in us that we can prophesy because this is what Jesus did. It wasn't until he's told her about her past after she says, I want this living water. I want it. I don't want to have to keep coming to this well, where her reason for coming to the well at that time of the day was a whole nother story. <laughs> she says, I want this that you have to give, so I don't have to keep coming back here again. And then Jesus, the word of knowledge through the power of the Holy Spirit, we know it is the Holy Spirit that he's used to speak this word of knowledge to her. He says, he asks a question, where's your husband? She answers truthfully, I don't have a husband. He says, you answered correctly. <laughs> you have had five, and the one you are with, you with now is not your husband. Bam. So now he really piques her attention. He gets her attention. And now she goes into it and says, well, you must be a prophet. That That is within any of us who have the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, who can give you the gift of knowledge. And you can speak, but you have to want that. You have to ask. So, And you want it because you want to be able to speak into the life of people and bring them out of the natural into the supernatural. So that it can open up their spirit to receive and to perceive that, hey, this is something that I don't have. I need it and I want it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit that's within you. You might say, well, that's the prophetic is that's for people that's prophets and and all that. No, any of us with the spirit of the living God within us can prophesy. That is that's not in my notes, but I got somebody needs to hear this because hallelujah, you think because you don't have a title as a prophet or a prophetess that you can't prophesy, but you can. Paul says, I desire that you all prophesy. You can do it. And it is necessary in this hour because people are spiritually dehydrated and they need to know that there is only one who can quench their thirst. People are thirsty. People are hungry for truth. And you who are watching today have access to to that. You have the spirit of the living God within you 
to tap into the realm of the spirit and speak into people's lives that that they know only God can do. You have that. You have that power and you have that authority. Yes, you do. So, all right. That So Jesus says, if you take this water and drink this that I have to give, in other words, it'll change your whole life. It'll change the course that you're on. It will change the, the trajectory of your life. And, of course, she says, well, I want this water. And he, and he takes her into the supernatural. He opens up her understanding, and he speaks about her past and her present. And that piques her attention, that she says, oh, I perceive that you are a prophet. And then she goes into this religious uh, dialogue about uh, where they worship. So again, Jesus has to bring her back into, okay, it's not about a place where you worship. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're not going into all that. But what I want you to grasp today and to be empowered and to be encouraged is to know that you have within you what it takes to help somebody else realize that Jesus is the only one who can quench their thirst. People are spiritually dehydrated and they are trying to hydrate themselves. They are trying, they are seeking, they are seeking to, to fulfill their thirst that they have by physical means, the flesh relationships as with this woman she's had five husbands and nothing and it didn't satisfy her because there was a deeper thirst and that thirst can only be satisfied through a life changing experience and encounter with Jesus the Christ and we know the end of the story after he talks to her and tells her <laughs> the end of the story is she runs, she leaves her water pot, that water that she came there for that was natural. <laughs> she was filled with the spiritual water that Jesus imported, that he gave to her. And she runs back into the town. And the scripture says she tells the men. <laughs> no doubt this woman had a reputation. But see, this is what, this is what an encounter would do for people who encounter Jesus Christ. And that encounter has to come through you who know Jesus Christ. It comes through us who have the spirit of the living God within us to speak into the life of people, to pray for them, hallelujah, to declare the word of God over their life and bring them into a spiritual understanding of their need for Jesus the Christ, who is the ultimate quench thirst, the quencher of their thirst. I hope this makes sense to you. I hope that you're understanding what I'm saying to you, the word of empowerment and encouragement for you today. Jesus, this is the message that we're sharing. Jesus is the one who can quench the deepest thirst in anybody's life. I know if you received him, that before salvation, there were desires that you tried to satisfy in your flesh. What you wanted, the way you wanted to do things. I know I did. But when I submitted my life to Christ, all of that, my desires changed. And he says, he promised before he left, he promised the Holy Spirit would come. He would lead and guide. And he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That living water, through the power of the Holy Spirit within you, is what's needed to help somebody else know that Jesus is the third quencher. People are looking for truth. They need to know. And so we're on a mandate in this hour to talk about Jesus, what he has done, how he died for everybody, 
how he was resurrected, and he is the Savior of the world. He is Lord, and people need to know that a life submitted and committed to Jesus Christ can bring fulfillment, not only eternal life, but abundant living in this life. And the greatest abundance or need that we have in this life now, in this world, in this crazy world, is peace in our mind and having a peace that everything is well, regardless of the situation or the circumstances. In Christ, we have the victory. Hallelujah. In Christ, hallelujah, we are victorious. He is obligated to take care of those who belong to him. He will come through. He always calls us to triumph because he loves us unconditionally. And not only us, but those who have not received him as Christ, as Savior and Lord. And he wants to quench their thirst. He wants to give them this living water so that it will flow like a fountain from them. And then this flow, we become conduits. We become the channels from which the living water flows from us and we can share with others and let them know. So not only is this 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 in the fourth chapter of John, it is really a lesson in evangelism. It is really a lesson in in evangelism to show us how we can interact and dialogue with people and bring them into the spiritual awareness that they need, to bring them out of looking at everything in the natural, from the natural perspective, and bring them, get their attention so that they can tap into the supernatural, into the spiritual realm. When he began with her with this dialogue, asking for a drink of water, yeah, the scripture lets us know that he really wanted natural water because it says he was wearied from his trip. But he took what was natural, hallelujah, and moved it into the spiritual. So that's why it's a lesson in helping us in evangelism, in sharing, in witnessing, bringing people to an understanding of their need for a supernatural encounter with the true and living God, Jesus the Christ. I pray that this blesses you, encourages you. And so when you come in contact with somebody this week, allow that living water to flow from you and speak into their life that will give them, hallelujah, a supernatural encounter with the living Word of God, Jesus the Christ. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so very much for what you have done for us and all that you have provided for us. Thank you. You have not left us as orphans, but you have adopted us into your family and you have provided for us everything that we need to be successful, to be uh, prosperous, hallelujah, to live an abundant life in this earth before we get to heaven. We thank you. We thank you that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to die for the sin of the world. We thank you. And because of what he has done for us, we are grateful that we are in the kingdom of God that Jesus is our Savior and our Lord. We have surrendered, we have submitted our life to him. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost who indwells us, leads us, and guides us. He is the living water that we have that can flow from us like a fountain and speak life into those who are spiritually dehydrated. And I pray today, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will fill us up again, refresh us, renew our minds, restore us, so that we can be 
all that you have called us to be and to do all that you have called us to do, assigned to us in this life. Let the word of God, the word, the living word, Jesus the Christ, dwell richly within us so that we will be like a fountain of living water so that we can pour into others and we can bless their lives and we can bring them into an awareness of what they need and then point them to Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Help us to be conduits of living water flowing out of us. Hallelujah. Father, we recognize that so many are spiritually dehydrated and they are ignorant of their need for the one who can quench their thirst. And they're looking and they're seeking in all the wrong places and getting involved in all the wrong relationships because they are thirsty. Hallelujah. But, oh God, today we pray for the opening of their eyes and we speak life. Hallelujah. The living water that you give to us to pour out to others. Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. You are so good. Yes, you are. You love us unconditionally, and not just us who have received your son Jesus as the Christ, but every living soul, every individual you love unconditionally. We thank you today, hallelujah, and we pray for revival, for restoration. We pray for eyes to be enlightened, ears to be open to the good news of Jesus and who he is and what he wants to do and all that he has already done, how he sacrificed his life, oh, Father, because of love. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you so very much for all that you have done. We bless you. I thank you for everyone that's watching, everyone that's listening. You see them. You know their needs and their heart's desire. You know everything about them, and you have promise that you perfect everything that concerns us. Remind them that they are victorious and whatever challenges they're facing or will face in this week, we know that you are well able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works with us. And let that power be your word. Hallelujah. Let your word dwell within us richly. Let your word, that the only thing that can sustain us in this hour, oh God, your word, oh, we delight in your law. We meditate in it day and night, and we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in our season. Oh, Father, we pray, let the fruit of the Holy Spirit come forth, be manifested in our lives. Cause us to be conduits of your goodness and your mercy and your grace and your love. Hallelujah. Let us show kindness and generosity. Hallelujah. Live by faith. Walk by faith and not by sight, Father, in the name of Jesus. Help us to be joyful, to have peace. That peace that, that we can't really comprehend. That peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh, Father, that you have already provided for us. That comes through the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Christ. We thank you. May we receive it now in the name of Jesus. I speak peace to those who are in need on today that will hear this broadcast. Let your peace, hallelujah, come. In the name of Jesus, those who are in need of salvation, those who are in need of their thirst being quenched, I pray in the name of Jesus, the thirst quencher, hallelujah, that their needs are met. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray, Father, that you will endow your people even the more the spirit that you have given to them i pray that it is increased and they would tap into the supernatural and be able to speak the gift of word the word of knowledge hallelujah let them prophesy 
your word as they encounter people who are spiritually dehydrated. Let them speak life. Hallelujah. Let them speak life. Let them see the good in people and speak and cause it to come forth and encourage and empower those that come into contact with them. I pray this in the name of Jesus. This is your desire. Hallelujah. Live big in us. Cause us to know who we are in you and the authority that you have given to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you so very much. I thank you once again for those who are watching, those who are listening, those who are here the replay, even perhaps years later. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let it be a blessing to them. Let it be empowering and encouraging to them. Let them not grow weary in well-doing but to continue to seek you, to love you, to praise you, to worship you as the only true and living God. We give you all praise, honor, and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And then once again, as we consider this month as clergy appreciation, I thank you for every, every pastor, Thank you for all those that you have given the gift of leadership in the body of Christ. Apostles, prophets, hmm. evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Everyone you have gifted in some area to share the love of Christ. I pray for them today. Hallelujah. And give you all praise, honor, and glory. Let your healing streams flow for those in need of healing that were here. Let your healing streams flow from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. The blood of Jesus cover. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus cover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are the great physician. Once again, we give you all praise, honor, and glory in the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our King, our soon-coming King. It is in his name that we pray with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We seal this prayer in his name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for those that joined in the room on Clubhouse. We pray that you are being blessed, those who are watching Facebook. God bless you. Thank you once again for watching. Thank you once again for listening. And uh, hallelujah. We speak God's blessings in your life. God bless you. Shanika, you came in again in the room. Thank you so very much there on Clubhouse. God bless you. God bless you. Those on Facebook again, God bless you. And we, hi there, Patsy. Uh, Lenora, God bless you. God bless you, Tina. God bless each of you. And we pray that you will live uh, a powerful, have a powerful week. And I pray that this word was encouraging to you and reminding you of who you are in Christ and what you have to give to those who are spiritually dehydrated. And of course, drink plenty of water. We talked about what water can do in the natural. And so uh, we need to drink plenty of water. God bless you and drink the word the water of the word and let it continue to cleanse and purify and do all that needs to be done in the realm of the spirit god bless you hey there odis god bless you god bless you thanks for watching kathy thanks for watching god bless each of you on today and so we're going to end the broadcast now god bless you love you